Let me share with you three of my best all-time driver videos. You know, driving doesn't have to be that complicated, especially when you get some of the secrets that I'm gonna share with you here. Let's go and get started. All right, shallowing that club. We see these pros getting this club perfectly shallow as they're starting their downswing. Everything's nice and in the slot. From there, all we have to do is turn through as hard as you can. It's gonna deliver the club very consistently and very powerfully through the golf ball. We see the pros up and down the PGA Tour all doing this very, very similarly. So why is it so daggone hard for most players to get that club shallow? If shallowing the club is so much easier to strike the ball well, wouldn't we all just be shallowing the club? How does that get started? That's exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna talk about why almost all players struggle getting steep where that originally comes from and how that develops throughout the swing. And then I'm gonna give you a surefire way to shallow the club that actually has nothing to do with the angle of this shaft that'll help it to start happening more naturally. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right into it. Now, the reason we wanna shallow, the reason this is so good, when this club shallows out kind of below the direction our hands are moving, so kind of imagine a, a plane that our hands are moving down or an angle our hands are moving down. If I can get that club shallower than that, that's set my club up on a great angle to where now as I'm coming through contact, I can be very consistent. So you can imagine a plane of glass. This, this isn't exactly what's happening, but it's a good visual for your mind. If I imagine this plane of glass, if I can get that club set on that plane of glass and rotate through and release on that plane of glass as I'm coming on through, that can really help the consistency of my golf shots. So how do we get off of this? If that's so good, it seems like everybody would just start right from the beginning releasing on that plane of glass. And I think most players do actually start somewhat kind of on that angle. They start similar to this plane of glass, but what ends up happening is we don't know how to release the face yet. So if I have this visual in my mind, when I'm very first beginning golf, and this is the same way I started, I bet you started the same way too. If I'm just gonna swing this club and pull the handle of the club toward the target as hard as I can, what ends up happening is if I swing nice and shallow and on plane, because I'm dragging this handle toward the target, look at my face, it's wide open. So if I hit a shot like this, you'll notice I'll be nice and shallow, but I'll have the idea of just pulling my handle toward the target as hard as I can, I'm probably gonna have a big block slice. Hopefully I don't hit a house on the right side. I'll try to tone it down a little bit. Oh geez, that's way over there. Sorry to the neighbors. Hopefully I didn't hit anything. But I had it nice and shallow. I pulled the handle toward the target and now the club face is wide open. So even if you start out shallowing out the club, you start out on the right track, you get some pretty negative feedback right away when that ball goes 45, 50 yards to the right and then slices even more. That's why everybody starts. So from there, we say, okay, what can I do to fix that? Well, instead of doing the correct way, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, which has to do what we're doing in the handle, the natural inclination is to say, okay, I'm gonna come over the top and now I'll start to get a little steeper and over the top and I get that ball, again, I'm not getting rid of the slice, but I'm taking that slice and I'm moving it over to the left side. So now it starts down the left side and the left rough it slices back into the middle of the fairway and I'm hitting the ball in play at least. So I went from on plane, dragging the club out of bounds. My fix actually made my swing worse. Now I started to come steep and over the top, but I got the ball in play. So it's giving me kind of positive feedback. And as you continue to get better, you probably get some lessons saying, okay, we got this big slice now, let's get rid of this thing. So instead of taking that steeper swing and shallowing it out, we end up taking that steep swing. We can imagine that plane of glass kind of coming this way or that swing direction coming this way and we're steep. We end up just tilting all that to the inside. And now we're steep and coming inside out and trying to release that club and flip with our hands to, to release the club. So in all three of those variations, we've kind of made manipulations that have got around from the main thing that we should be working on. We started out on plane with the face wide open. We fixed that by coming steep and over the top and then we fix that by dropping that inside. We're still steep, but now we're flipping the hand. So what's the one piece that's missing from all three of these scenarios? And that's how to square the club up properly with the hands. And that's exactly what I'm gonna go over next in this drill. All right, so now let's go through the progression. And again, to recap on this, the only way I can come in on plane is to make sure that I square this face up. And that squaring of the face comes from rotating this handle. So if I'm looking from down the line, here's my club face straight up and down. Here's the butt end of my club. And if I'm rotating that, just like a clock face rotating, you see how that opens and closes the face. Now, if I'm used to, that's one way to open and close the face. Another way to open and close the face is by moving my wrist backwards and forwards, kind of flipping my wrist. 
So a lot of players get into the, uh, the, the habit of flipping to go ahead and close that face. You see, the more I flip, the more that face closes. The more I have my hands this way, like we started, the more that face is open. So we all get into the habit of opening and closing the face by doing this rather than twisting and rotating the face that way. So let's combat that by learning how to square the face through that rotation. Then we can bring it on naturally, much more simply, much more naturally onto the plane in the downswing or on plane. So let's start by going to the top of the swing. What I want you to do is go ahead and go to the top and relax your arms. You don't have to be tight here, but I want you to imagine again this clock face. If we can rotate that, what would be to my right, the logo of my left hand going up toward the sky, the palm of my right hand going up toward the sky, my knuckles kind of rotating this way, that would be closing the face. So you see as I, as I came on down, that would be a closed club face. As I come through, that would be closing it to where it would be promoting much more of a hook or a draw. So I want you to do 20 reps. Just go to the top of your swing, do you know four or five, feeling like you rotate that face closed, rotate it closed again, get used to that feeling of rotating it closed, and then come back down to the bottom of the swing. So you're gonna do four or five, get the feeling of that, and then go ahead and swing on through. What you'll notice is you'll have a sensation that face is really closing down, so now it's easier to get that club shallow and from the inside, and you don't have to worry about it going to the right at all. So we're gonna start out doing reps of five, closing, 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 and then swinging through. Do a good 20 reps or however many it takes you to feel comfortable with that. Then let's pause halfway down. I wanna go just halfway down my swing, pause when the club's about parallel with the ground, and now let's close that face again, three, four, five times until you get the feeling of that. Start opening the hips like you would in the golf swing, and then go ahead and feel like you swing on through to get that nice draw. Let's do the opposite here for a second so you can feel the other extreme. If I come down this way and I open this face, open, open, now there's two things that I could do to square this up. I could start to come over the top, or I could flip my hands to try to save it. That open position is not gonna be good. I need that club face to be square and closing as I'm making my downswing. So again, four or five reps, swing on through to get the feel for that. Once I've done those, I've felt the club face start to rotate at the top of the swing, I've felt the club face start to rotate at the bottom of the swing, now it's starting to make complete sense how I could get the club in here on the slot and still get that face squared up as I'm coming through contact. So your final reps, do four or five reps where now you get the club in here, really exaggerate that wrist action, that rotating of the club, and you're gonna feel completely comfortable getting the club way back in here and being comfortable that ball is gonna turn over from right to left as you're doing that. So let's do at least five, or, five, or, five reps at a time, maybe 20 reps to get comfortable at the top, 20 down here at the bottom, and let's do another 20, shallowing that club out and pairing all that together. If you can do all those, now you're gonna feel much more comfortable with how that club has to move, and you're gonna hit that great draw right from the slot. All right, that perfect takeaway. What do we really wanna accomplish in a perfect takeaway? Well, ideally, we would like to have our body and our chest rotating quite a bit early in the backswing. That's gonna help us to make a bigger shoulder turn and get more power. I'd also like to have the club working fairly well on plane. So as I'm coming back, I want this club to be working up plane. That way it makes it easier to be consistent in the golf swing. If I drag the club way back inside, my tendency is gonna be to reroute it over the top or if I pick the club way back out of here, I may loop it back to inside too much. So if we can get the good shoulder turn, we can get the club working back on plane, that's gonna be a pretty daggone good takeaway. If we can add in a third piece there as a, as a result of this to get a nice weight shift to the right, things are really gonna get easy in the golf swing. So I'm gonna break this down for you. I have a very unique drill. We're gonna go through 20 reps at a time. If you follow along with this, it's gonna help you to make your takeaway so much more consistent and become automatic. Let's go and get started. All right, so let's jump right into these drills and start ingraining this. The great thing is you can do these right from your living room. You don't have to go to the driving range and you can start building a better swing. So first, let's get the feel of the proper rotation of my chest. So if I grab my ribs to the side here, as I finish my takeaway, I'd like to have my ribs rotated about 45 degrees. So again, it's that early move off the ball, that early rotation of the upper body, that's gonna help us to get what we call the power turn as we complete the backswing and we make this good full shoulder turn all the way to the top. 
that starts right from the beginning, the first move off the ball. So feel your ribs rotating here until you're about 45 degrees rotated. You'll notice when you do this, you get a little slight weight shift, a little pressure on the inside of your foot as you're doing this. And you'll feel like your arms, definitely my arms aren't doing anything here, but even in the golf swing, I'm feeling like my arms aren't doing much at all in this very early part. Now, as I add a club to this, again, I'm just rotating my rib cage and I let my arms swing back as they will. I'm, I'm not really doing much with them. My right arm is staying fairly loose and relaxed and straight. My wrists are staying fairly relaxed. Not much going on there. And if I just rotate my ribs, that's gonna kind of bring this club back in this position. So I'm just letting that club kind of flow back into that position. I'm not trying to manipulate anything. I'm not trying to set anything into a perfect spot. I'm just letting the rotation of my body kind of guide that club into that general area. And when that happens, you'll see I'm pretty nice on plane here. I've had a good weight shift to the right. That's really good. Now let's do this the wrong way. Now we're not gonna move our ribs at all. So instead of rotating, I'm just gonna stay dead still and imagine me taking this club back with just my hands and arms and trying to put it in the right spot. I don't have the momentum of my body. My arms are kind of moving around in different spots every time. I really don't have the, the tempo and the, the smoothness to it that I would if I'm rotating my big pieces of my body. So when I just do my arms and don't rotate my ribs, now I'm having to place this club in the perfect spot every time. And it's really hard to do and I just don't have a flow to this. So start to feel both of those, the correct way and the incorrect way. Then I want you to do 20 reps where you just focus on the rotation of your rib cage and let that club flow into place. Go ahead and get, do a good 20 reps from there. And then we'll move on to the next piece of the perfect takeaway. So now let's pick up where we left off and talk about those elbows again. Now, if I do this properly, you'll notice that my elbows are staying in front of my body. So if I just have my, a club kind of under my elbows as I rotate back, my elbows are on this side of my body and I'm just letting those be nice and soft. So again, if we look at the correct way to do this again, finishing here with my clubs parallel, look how my elbows are kind of in front of my body. They're not moving around a ton. That's the correct way of doing this. Let's do 20 reps doing it the correct way and the incorrect way. So the incorrect way would be, again, letting my elbows slide across my body. Now you'll see this right elbow has come way back. I'm doing a lot of wrist and arm action. I can pull this club in a variety of different directions if I start engaging those elbows. So the correct way, again, elbows soft, keep them in front of your body, and just let the momentum of your body guide that club back versus trying to place that by moving your arms around in a variety of ways. So let's do 20 total reps. Feel the good way and the bad way first. Very little elbow movement versus a ton of elbow movement so you can feel the difference. And then do 20 reps really feeling like, the again, the momentum of your torso is guiding this club back. The weight shift to the right is guiding the club back. You're not trying to manipulate it very much. So we talked about the ribs, we talked about the elbows. Now let's move out farther down the chain to the hands. Now, what I most of the time see players doing when they're trying to get all these angles really nice and everything perfect and moving their body just right is they get really tight with the hands. And if you get tight with the hands, the tendency is to start to pick this club up with the hands, to jerk the backswing, and to really get your tempo all blown out of the water right from the start. What I want you to feel here is as I set up, I want my hands to be extremely soft on this club like I'm barely holding on to it. And as I rotate my ribs and rotate my body to get this club moving back, my hands are gonna remain really soft there. I'm gonna go ahead and let the club flow into position. I'm not gonna to try to guide it into position. I'm just gonna let it come back and through. Imagine it's kind of working up a plane of glass here, and I'm just letting it rock back and through on that plane of glass. If the club wants to open a little bit, as it naturally will, the club face wants to open, I'm gonna let that happen. Again, I'm not trying to manipulate or guide the club. I'm letting it do what it wants to do. When I see players that are trying to control the club, they'll have the hands tight and they'll wanna bring this club back just perfectly on this certain angle that they've pictured in their mind of being right. Don't let that happen. Go ahead and let the club do whatever it wants. There's players with the club a little shut that play fantastic golf that have won on the PGA Tour. There's players with the club a little bit open that have played fantastic golf and won on the PGA Tour. So don't worry about that. Get more of the rhythm and the feel of the swing so we have this nice takeaway. I want you to do 20 total reps, soft hands, let the club work back nice and easy, and it's gonna take a lot of the stress out and getting you really loading up the body in the proper way. All right, that's about as good as I'm gonna hit one. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get tons of power, tons of speed. And the number one mistake that I see players making 
over and over again. And I bet that you've fallen into this trap yourself. That's shortening your swing, making your swing go all arms, not really using the body. Man, that just kills your swing speed. And it's actually really easy. Once I teach you how to engage your entire body from your feet, your knees, your hips, all the way up to your shoulders and then your arms, it's gonna make it very simple to get more swing speed. So first, let's take a look at, we just saw a good swing. Now let me go ahead and do a bad swing or one of them where I let my arms take over. I don't rotate my body and I lose tons of distance. So you see I got some really good distance in that first shot. Now, let me do the opposite of that where I just pick the club up, all hands and arms. And really where this stems from is being worried to turn away from the golf ball. So if I'm facing this golf ball, obviously I'm trying to hit this ball solid and I'm really focused on making contact, good contact. So naturally my brain is saying, well, don't turn away from that ball. I wanna keep my knees, my hips, my shoulders, everything facing this golf ball, which is gonna increase the likelihood of me hitting it nice and solid. So what happens is when I turn all this off and I don't wanna rotate, now the only thing left is my hands and arms. And now I start to pick this club up with my hands and arms. You can see my body hasn't really turned very much. I have to fold up my arms. Maybe your left arm is bending a little bit in the backswing. That's a key indicator that you're really not rotating the body as well as you could be. Maybe you feel like your hands are tight and your swing is quick. That's another key indicator that you may not be doing this as good as you could in the golf swing. But when I turn off my body, now I'm having to go all hands and arms. Yes, I can hit the ball pretty straight. Yes, that ball is in the fairway, but I probably lost a good 70 or 100 yards just trying to swing all arms. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to unlock the full body to unlock your full power and speed so that you can effortlessly hit it 20 or 30 yards farther. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's take a look at this swing where I lost tons of distance. What you're gonna notice is from my lower body. Notice how my feet are very stationary. My left heel isn't lifting. My knees aren't moving a ton. My hips aren't turning very much. And finally, my shoulders aren't rotating back nearly as much as I'd like. But what happens there is now, like I talked about, my hands and arms have to completely take over in the golf swing. That forces me to lose a lot of distance. Let me walk you through a step-by-step -step progression going from the ground up to allow you to maximize every bit of power that you have without feeling like you're swinging very hard. If you can use your entire body, it feels very smooth and very effortless as you increase your swing speed. So grab a golf club. Even if you're sitting right from your living room, grab a club right now grab a broomstick, grab whatever you can. If you don't have anything to, to grab, just make slow motion practice swings just using your hands and arms, it's completely fine. So let's start from the feet up. Now, most people are not very flexible. And one thing that you can do to test your flexibility is go ahead and stand up, keep your belt buckle facing forward, put your arms across your shoulders and see how much you can rotate without letting your belt buckle move. You'll notice it's not gonna be a lot. Now, if you're Adam Scott or you're some PGA Tour player with crazy range of motion, maybe you can rotate quite a bit at, without moving your lower body at all, but you'll probably find that you feel pretty limited there. Especially if you get a little bit older, you get a little bit, a little bit, put a few pounds on, makes it even more difficult to rotate. That's why this is so key is what I'm gonna teach you today. So do that test again, put your arms across your shoulders. Don't let your belt buckle move at all. So I don't want you to cheat and do this and let my hips move, keeping our hips still. Try to rotate your shoulders you should be able to see about a 45 degree shoulder turn. That's about what I've gotten here. So if I put this club across my shoulders, have the tip of it on my shoulder tips here, my fingers on my shoulders, don't move my hips, I'm gonna rotate my shoulders as much as I can, that's a pretty good amount there. Now I don't have crazy amount of flexibility, I'm betting that you don't either. You're probably gonna find that you did about the same as I did in the test, or maybe even a little bit worse. If you did worse, this is really, really key to do this. Now. If I now use my lower body, let me do this same drill and I'm gonna rotate my shoulders as much as I can here. I'm gonna go ahead and not move my hips, rotate my shoulders, I'm only getting to there. Now if I go ahead and let my hips rotate, you'll see that I'm getting almost 90 degrees. So that extra 45 degrees came from my hips, my lower body. Now if I let my left heel lift very slightly off the ground, now you'll notice I can go more than 45 degrees. When I lift my heel very slightly, you may not even notice this happening in my swing, but as I barely lift that up, that loosens up my knee, that loosens up my hips, that allows them to turn more, and now I can get this big turn. So the key that I want to be able to get to is I want to use the whole body, and if I can focus in on one thing, the end result is I want my left shoulder to get behind that golf ball. So as I'm making this backswing, what I'm feeling like is my lower body is really loose, and that's allowing me to get this left shoulder 
behind that golf ball. If I can do that, then I know I've really loaded up and I'm gonna be able to crush the ball. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more in full speed here and a slow motion one. And notice from the ground up, everything is very loose and I'm gonna get this left shoulder behind the ball. There we go, and hit that one fantastic too. So you'll notice there, I was able to drive it over 360 yards. Now I'm a little bit downwind, I'm not gonna lie. There's a little wind helping there. I was able to swing 120 miles an hour and you probably notice it didn't seem all that quick and rushed and, and jerky. It was a pretty nice smooth swing went right down the middle of the fairway. How was I able to do that? Well, in reality, I'm probably a good 30 or 40 yards longer than I used to be playing on the mini tours and practicing eight hours a day. And that all came from properly loading the body exactly like I'm gonna teach you here. So let's go right from the beginning. This is a progression. Again, you wanna follow along right with these. Don't skip and go straight to trying to hit a golf ball. Do these practice swings so you can build a little bit of muscle memory. And I know muscle memory isn't real, but that's kind of what it's doing is changing your neurological system to build the feeling of this. So let's start out by putting a club right across our shoulders. And again, the end goal here and what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to get this left shoulder behind that golf ball. Now, if you imagine my, my left shoulder, my scapula, the back of my left shoulder, I wanna imagine that my scapula or the back of my left shoulder is looking at the golf ball when I finish my backswing. Now, if you're very inflexible, that seems impossible, but I guarantee you, you follow this progression, you're gonna be able to do that. We're gonna test it right now. Put this club across your shoulders, and the first thing that I want you to do is go ahead and rotate as much as you can in the backswing to get this club, the tip of this club pointing far behind that golf ball as you can, and then we're gonna come all the way through to where now my right shoulder is gonna go as far down the fairway as you can. Go ahead and just do a couple of them to get loosened up. Now the first piece we're gonna focus on to increase that is we're gonna lift this left heel just very slightly. And if you're looking from this angle, as I turn, that's about as far as I can go. But if I let my left heel loosen a little bit and I let it lift up off the ground slightly, now I can go another 15 or 20 degrees, maybe even a little bit more than that. So here I'm locked with the left heel down. As I loosen up that left heel, now I can go even a little bit more. Now my left shoulder is really getting far back there. Do 10 reps club across the shoulder, loosen the left heel, try to go farther back each time, and then come on through to a good full finish, getting your right foot or right shoulder as far down the fairway as you can. Now, when you're doing the right shoulder down, you have to really key in on this right foot. If I keep my right foot down, no matter how far I try to rotate on through, I can't rotate very far. But as I let that heel come up, I let my foot swivel around, now I can get much farther down there. I'm not too worried about how far you can turn back and how far you can turn through. I just want you to maximize kind of your full range of motion, your full potential, so that you can get as much as you can personally. If you're super, super tight, you're not gonna get quite as much. If you're very, very flexible, you're gonna get a little bit more. It really doesn't matter. No matter what you do, if you turn more, you're gonna hit the ball a little bit farther than you do currently. So don't get too locked up in how much you're doing. Just try to get as full as you can. So we've done those 10 reps. Now I want you to focus in on the hips. Imagine this belt buckle has a laser shooting out of it. And as I make my back swing, I wanna get my belt buckle facing behind this golf ball as far as I can. That again, allows this, my hips to rotate, that allows my shoulders to go even farther. If my hips don't turn very much, the arms take over, your swing speed goes down the drain. So here's no hip turn, club across the shoulders, that's as far as I can go. I let these hips rotate, now all of a sudden, I look like a PGA Tour player. I'm not very flexible, but that's because I've allowed my feet and my hips to move. Anybody, regardless of any range of motion, any flexibility, you can take your hips and turn those a bunch if you loosen up your left leg, if you let that heel and that knee relax. So anybody can do this, just like if you're turning to face somebody and talk to them, that's not a, you don't have to be flexible at all to do that motion. That's the same thing we're doing here in the golf swing. Another 10 reps, club across your shoulder to get used to that, that feeling. And then make sure every single time you rotate all the way around as far as you can go too. That's very key. So your feet move in the golf swing. This is probably one of the biggest misconceptions I've seen. People have been told that they need to keep their toes forward. You need to keep your feet locked on the ground and stable. That is the biggest load of BS I've ever heard. The feet move in the golf swing, I promise you. Look at PGA Tour players. You're gonna see guys like Justin Thomas whose feet come completely off the ground and his foot is almost 50, 60 degrees open when he comes in the follow through. You're gonna see most PGA Tour players, feet move around, come off the ground, rotate a little bit, 
the feet have to move. That doesn't make you any less consistent. It actually makes you more consistent because as my feet move, now I can rotate very easily and I can smooth out my swing and I can be more coordinated. If I try to keep these feet like concrete blocks in the ground, now all of a sudden my hands and arms take over and I'm kind of flashing at the golf ball. I hit that one in the woods left, but there's just no way to be consistent. We have to rotate the body to allow this to happen. So 10 reps, focusing on the hips. And then finally, you're gonna to get to your final 10 reps, focusing on the back of that left shoulder. So again, if you're looking at the back of my left shoulder here, what would be my scapula, I wanna face that to the golf ball or do my best attempt to face that to the golf ball. So 10 more reps here, back. Okay, now my scapula can see that golf ball. My, le my chin is gonna be over my left shoulder. You're gonna be noticing that your left eye will be able to see the golf ball pretty easily, but your head is, it's okay to get your head to rotate a little bit going back, completely fine. Again, the golf ball is still gonna be there when you're rotating the downswing. I promise you it'll be completely fine when you, you make your swing. So 10 swings, back of my left shoulder toward the ball, and then again, finish up the good full follow through on every single one of those. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same th three step process. Heels, ankles, let those move, then my hips, then my shoulders. 10 reps each, the only difference here is I'm gonna be swinging a club. So 10 swings, focusing on the left heel, Big a turn as I can going back, biggest turn as I can coming through, fluid swings, back and through, trying to create some speed when you're doing this. I'm gonna go pretty fast when I'm going through this. Then 10 more swings with your belt buckle, just like we did before with the club across your shoulders. Get some speed. There we go, really trying to be aggressive while this is happening. Full turn back, full turn through. And then finally, left shoulder behind that golf ball, 10 swings, really load up, and then all the way through to the good full finish. So in total, you'll have 30 practice swings, club across your, shoulder, club across your shoulders, 30 more practice swings without a golf, a golf ball swinging the club. Now you're starting to get comfortable with this, and when you put the golf ball back down, you're gonna get better results a lot sooner. All right, now we're ready to put it to the test. Let's go ahead and hit a golf ball, and when you go to the range, I wanna do 20 swings, and then, or excuse me, 30 swings focused on each of these pieces. So my first 10 shots, I'm focused on the left heel, just like we did in these practice swings. So here, let that left heel loosen up, let my hips and my knee turn. That's gonna allow me to be a bit more fluid. Let's go ahead and try one out here. All right, we see there, my heel lifted a little bit, hit that one nice and solid. Your next 10 balls, you're gonna go ahead and focus in on the hips turning. Let me grab a couple more and hit some for you. And on these, again, same thing. Imagine my hips are turning as much as possible. That's gonna get me to the end result, which is this left shoulder back, which is what I'm really going for. So here, belt buckle moving as much as possible. My feet are gonna be moving a little bit on the ground. Let's go ahead and give it a rip. Another one right down the middle of the fairway, hit that one well. And finally, let's get that left shoulder behind the golf ball. Again, it doesn't matter how inflexible you are. You're just trying to do the best you can personally. That's gonna add 10, 20, 30 yards to your drives by going, getting the most that you can. Another big key here, once I load up, I also have to finish my swing, really come on through to a good full finish. If I don't finish my swing, no matter how much I load up, I'm not gonna get much swing speed. All right, hit that one. Probably one of the better ones focusing on getting that left shoulder back and then really rotating through to that good full finish. Now, the last thing I have to leave you with here is make sure that we don't just quit on the backswing like I was talking about. No matter how good you turn back, I also have to rotate all the way on through to a good full finish or I'm not gonna get that swing speed. And in fact, this is one of the five things that I would say the most important pieces of technique. That's what I call the power turn in my top speed golf system. And I actually have a preview, one of my best power turn videos. I'm gonna play here in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card up at the top of the screen or the link down below in the description and you'll get instant access to that. We're gonna build on what we talked about in this video so that you can get that good shoulder turn every single time. You can have effortless power. You can step up and drive it 20 or 30 yards past your buddies and feel like you're not even swinging that hard. So check out this power turn video. I can't wait to help you with your golf game. Let's go and get started. Most of the instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets 
to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your backswing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, so those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work.